Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of It's Not All Rainbows. I'm your host, Lindsay Goodman, and if you don't know me, I'm a survivor of narcissistic abuse in a queer relationship, and I'm here to validate and support those who have been or are in my shoes and to help spread awareness of what these kinds of relationships can look like. If you don't know, you don't follow me on Instagram where I've been talking about this. I am a very soon-to-be trauma recovery coach as well, so... Let's dive in to this week's topic, which is going to be a continuation of last week's when I talked about the day that my abuser um, used the fake breakup control tactic to try to um, end an important conversation that I had suggested we have, and I took it seriously, and I started making changes to end the relationship and move out. However, it did take me another two months to actually get free and go no contact. So I'm going to add on to what I talked about last week. If you haven't listened to that podcast episode or seen that video, scroll back and find that one. I think it's called when a, um, the day a narcissist said let's break up or something like that. So let's see. It was late August of last year. I am coming up on one year of being quote unquote, broken up with my abuser. So I'm very excited about that milestone. Um, so I talked about what happened that day when we broke up, when we came home, the triangulation attempt from, uh, from them to triangulate my son's dad against me, um, all of that. So now we're looking at late October or sorry, late August to actually it was early October. Um, when I finally left. So what did that time look like? What was I doing during all that time of living with this person, um, knowing that it was over? Um, for me, at least. <laughs> it's a very uncomfortable um, feeling to be in that situation. I know a lot of people are or will be when they try to get away from their abuser because, again, it's not an easy thing. It's not a just leave, okay, fine, I packed my bag and went kind of thing. A lot of times we are very entangled with these people on purpose, um, not by not by us. Like We fully believed that this was going to be you know, the person that we were going to be with and we were making all these choices based on what they were telling us was best for us, moving in having babies, getting married very quickly, everything like that. And so we have a lot to figure out to kind of, again, extract ourselves. And I did live my, with my abuser. Our lease was up in June and I had been um, from early 2021 saying, I just have to make it till June. I just have to make it till June. And I did not leave in June. We did not break the lease. Um, it was something that I was telling people, I just have to make it till June. Like, I'm so miserable. I got to get in in June. I got to figure out what I'm going to do. And again, yeah, just came and went and I was still there. Um, and part of that is because we had done a save the relationship trip to Mexico in May, which was a huge setback for me because I had been not sharing about them on social media. I had like withdrawn very much. And then we got invited to Mexico. I'm happy to do a whole episode about save the relationship, whatever's, um, because that is a whole thing. And let me tell you, it does not work if you're in an abusive, toxic relationship. Maybe it's worked once in a blue moon, but probably not. Um, and so that was a huge setback because we went to Mexico and I shared them in my stories. And then I felt like a huge backslide. Now I have to try to make this work because I just like went through all this effort I, you know, all of this, whatever. So now it's August. Oh, and you know what else? In June of 2021, they invited their family to come stay with us for like a week. And then we went to visit their family in Texas for like a week. And none of this was something that I planned or approved of or was interested in doing. Because like I said, I had one foot out the door for, you know, six months by then. So there's a lot of kind of build up to this point. And now... I'm trying to figure out how to get out. I immediately after this pulled back, I began doing the gray rock method, which is kind of where you just become uninteresting. You stop responding. You don't get involved in arguments. You don't bring anything up to them when they start talking to you. Like I can remember like they would come in and, and just say whatever. And I would just be like, okay, I understand. Yeah, that makes sense. Instead of diving into whatever it is because they want you to engage. They want to pull you away from whatever it is you're doing because they notice they're picking up that your behavior has changed. And uh, I stuck with it. If you want to do some research on the gray rock method, I definitely um, 
encourage it because it did work for me to have that emotional distance and again to save me from getting pulled into those eight nine ten hour arguments that we've all had in these kinds of toxic relationships however warning if the person is physically abusive which mine was and i am very lucky that this did not um sort of trigger them into physical abuse it can be dangerous because they pick up that you're pulling back from them. They pick up that you're acting different and they don't like it. And so they can lash out. So please proceed with caution. So gray rock method is in place. I am now sleeping in my son's room so that I'm sleeping separately um, from them. I stop saying I love you. I tell them to stop saying I love you. Um, I'm just keeping very much like I've put this little boundary up and I'm sticking to myself. And of course they notice it. Um, they're cornering me when I'm in the shower and saying, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? You're hurting me. You're, you're isolating me. You're pushing me out of the family. I didn't do anything wrong. And I'm just calmly in the shower saying, I'm trying to take a shower. Would you mind, you know, letting me finish up the shower? I'm just, you know, chilling. Um, why am I doing this? We broke up. No, no, we didn't break up. No, we did not break up. I didn't say that. I didn't mean it. Again, fake breakup to control the situation. Um, and so in September, I had, you know, we're living like this, this weird, tense, like crossing paths, like whatever. They're surely trying to figure out how to get me back into the cycle of abuse. And I decided to visit my family in Indiana, which is where I am now. And so I booked a ticket for, I think, about a week. And I was just hanging out with my family and I felt pretty good. I remember thinking, I need to get away. I need to go be around people who care about me and I need to see how it feels to be apart from them because when you're in a trauma bond, you feel so bonded to this person. You feel like you can't get away. You feel like you can't live without them. Even though they're the one that's hurting you and you're very aware at this point that they are the one that's that's hurting you. They're the one that's causing you all this trauma and pain and suffering. And so I went and I felt really good and I tried to like not communicate with them very much, but of course we're still texting. Of course, you know, they're still asking about my son or I would send a picture of what he's doing and things like that. Um, so very much still, you know, still in contact. And um, I didn't want to go back. And I decided to delay my trip by several days, which of course uh, kind of alerted my mom, who's very perceptive. She knew that we had broken up, but like, you know, I would say like, well, I just need to figure out what I'm going to do, but you know, things are okay. I'm just like, I'm not ready to go back. And when I did finally go back, you know, I just didn't want to go back. I didn't want to deal with it. I didn't want to have to figure out how I was going to get away. I didn't want, cause I knew that it was going to be very difficult and that it was going to take time and that I didn't really have help and that it wasn't just going to be an easy, um, all right, now I'm going to go back. We're going to terminate this lease. I'm going to pack up my stuff. You're going to pack yours. Cause that's just not how it works with the narcissist. It really isn't. Um, and so they picked us up from the airport. It was late at night, about an hour and a half drive from the airport to our house. And my son was really excited to see them, just like talking away. And for a little bit, they were like, oh, just talking to him, you know? And I, I have a feeling that they were trying to like impress me with how just present they were with him. And oh, they just miss him so much. Oh, look how good they are with him and things like that. But you know, after a little bit, they're like, is he gonna shut up? And I'm like, dude, he missed you. This is what kids do. Like he might do this the whole way home, but eventually he falls asleep. We go home, take him in, put him to bed and we sit up and talk for a little bit. And it's, it's just new, you know, I don't remember what they were saying, but I'm just kind of, again, just like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, whatever. And I remember walking down the hallway and, you know, up from the time we met at the airport to the time that we were start, starting this walk down the hallway where they were, you can tell just trying to act normal, engage with me like normal hoping that I would have taken this time to sweep the breakup under the rug and forget about it. And as we're walking down the hall, I stop at my son's room because it's before our room, uh, quote unquote, our room. And they stop in their tracks and turn around and just glare at me. And you can see that moment where they're like, this person is not complying. This person is not going to lay down and die like they always have, like my ex-wife did, like everybody else that I abused would lay down and die for me and forget and forgive and do all this and grovel and beg me to love them and blah, blah, blah. This person is not doing what I want them to do. It was a glare. The mask dropped on me. Like there, if you've ever seen the moment when a mask drops from a narcissist, it's clear as day. It's not like, 
I guess it can probably be this overtime thing, but it's like instant, just this, you did it to do, huh? Okay. You're going to do this fine. You're getting treated like crap. And from that moment on, it was tense. So we're talking, they were pretending to be my partner and happy and loving for like two hours, maybe two and a half hours. And then from that point in September until the day that I left the house, um, which would have probably been two weeks, um, it was tense. And I would take my son, he would go to school for a couple hours, a couple days a week. And then I would take him to a town 45 minutes away and stay there and try to meet up with a friend and try to find joy. But it was a lot of getting him away from them, keeping both of us out of the house, giving space, things like that. And then if they were gone, we would stay home and, you know, all of that stuff. But it was just, it's not fun. Um, and then there was the night that, and I have talked about this before, but the night that they came home late. I'm not going to go into great detail about this because I did do a previous podcast episode about this. When they came home late, they were agitated with him. He said, no, I don't want you. I want mama. And they started storming around the house, slamming doors, moving things around saying, he's a brat. I'm done with him. I'm done. Blah, blah, blah. Packed him up, had someone there who helped me pack him up, who was witnessing this behavior, who was witnessing everything. As I left, they walked up to me and they said, you don't have to leave you're doing this. So again, taking that blame of everything that's going on, putting it on me, making me seem like I'm crazy and dramatic and all of that stuff. I actually did leave. I went to a, what I thought was a safe place. And then, um, we were there for about a week. Um, the day after I left, I was like, I think I am crazy. They planted that seed. And I'm like, I did overreact. I don't know what to do. And so I was actually able to text a previous partner that they had. And I said, at the risk of sounding crazy, were you ever physically abused by this person? At this point, I didn't really fully understand the depth of the emotional abuse, sexual, financial. Um, these were like the milder forms of abuse that I experienced, but still definitely in the overall abuse that I experienced. Um, that was not yet something that I could grasp, but I was grappling with the fact that my son and I were actually in danger, physical danger. I had been physically abused several times throughout the relationship. He had not yet, as far as I know, they were never, he, they never touched him in any way, but I don't know what they did when I was not home, but I'm starting to now realize that physically we cannot be around this person anymore. And luckily this person said, yes, they shared their story with me. I was able to be validated. I was able to know that I'm not crazy, that I'm not alone, that this person is very, indeed, very dangerous. Um, and at that point, I, they were doing all the hoovering attempts, which I can't remember if I've done an episode specifically about the hoovering from that point on, because that could be a whole episode. They were calling, texting, threatening me, showing up, bringing food because they care about me and want to make sure I'm eating, walking into the house without permission, targeting my son, trying to get him to leave with them to go get a donut, all of these things. I call my mom. I tell her what's going on. She's like, he is in danger. You need to drop everything right now and come home. So I flew back to Indiana. I was only back home, home for two weeks. Now I'm back in Indiana. And when I left, I remember thinking, I'm going to go no contact the moment I get on the plane. But it took me from October 3rd to October 20th to go no contact. I would like test it out. I would not talk to them for two days and then reach out or they would reach out and I would respond. And so the contact is dwindling, but still there. Um, I ended up finding out that they had finally made their move on the new supply, which they had been lining up before I left, because of course, at this point, they can see that I, again, am not complying, that I'm on my way out. They're like, hey, it looks like I'm losing this supply. I've got to have someone else lined up. They made that move. I saw it. And it was so similar to the things that they were saying to that person was exactly the same as they said to me. And I will tell you right now, that was the most clarity that I've ever had in my entire life. Just like smack in the face, answer from whatever, greater, whatever, saying this is in it abusive, narcissistic, horrible person. That person is now in danger. You are safe. As long as you actually go no contact, stay away, free yourself. This is your opportunity. And that is when I blocked them on everything, went no contact. Um, they still were living in our house. All my plants, all my things, all of my son's things, my dogs were there. 
Um, and I have made a lot of content talking about the dogs because a lot of people are like, well, how could you leave your dogs? Again, this is a whole other episode. We could talk about this forever and how abusers use dogs to control. They use them as pawns. They can abuse the dogs. They can neglect the dogs. They can fight you for the dogs, take you to court, all of this stuff. Um, again, that's another story. Didn't feel like I had a choice, but I did have a plan in place to get them. And I'm very lucky because someone stepped up, offered to get them for me, keep them for me took them to get groomed because they had mats and fleas because they had been neglected um, and just really, really wonderful and helped getting them back to me. And so um, I stayed away for 90 days. I stayed away for 90 days. I had a plan. I knew that I was not going to come back for 90 days. I waited until they moved out of the house until I got confirmation from the landlord that they had their key, that that, that person was not going to be back there. And then I waited another 30 days to go back to the house to even step foot in that town because I wanted to put that much time and distance between us due to the amount of like erratic behavior that they were displaying when I first left. It's a very common thing when you do leave for them to ramp up the, the abuse, separation abuse, um, start a smear campaign, do all this, you know, send in the flying monkeys, all the flying monkeys. Again, I have a whole podcast episode about flying monkeys, if you want to know about that. Um, but it, my point of this whole thing is that it's not easy. People will always say, just leave, or why didn't you just leave? It is not easy. All of us have a different story, a different experience. Some of us are going to have more trouble than others if we are legally bound to this person, if we're married, if we have children, if finances are an issue, we're you know tangled up in finances, they have control over the finances, you feel like there's no way out. Um, so all of our stories are going to be very different. But this point is to show how complicated it is. It's to show um, if you're in this situation and you're not out yet, it's to validate you in, in feeling like you're trapped and you can't get out. It's a very real thing. They do it on purpose. Um, and for anyone who might be watching this who's never been in this and is just curious about what this can look like, thank you for watching. And, you know, just to be aware of how difficult this is so that hopefully you never look at someone and say, just leave because that is just not helpful. It does not work that way. These people will fight tooth and nail to keep you in it. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. It's 100 degrees and like 100% humidity. And I forgot to turn the fan on before I started. It's very hot today. And let's see, what else do I want to share before I go? Okay, we have a webinar coming up on August 18th. The link is in the bio of... Um, TikTok, Instagram. You can find me at the Lindsay Goodman. I am pretty active, especially on Instagram and my stories. I also have a little highlight link in my um, Instagram highlights where you can find information for the web webinar. We're going to be interviewing the author of the book, Why Can't I Just Leave? There are several other uh, survivors that are going to be in that webinar. It's going to be Manji Rupri, Lisa Sunny from Stronger Than Before, Dr. Carrie McAvoy, and Brie from Abuse is Abuse. So it's going to be the five of us interviewing the author of this book. The book is about just what I'm talking about here, how hard it is to leave, how insidious this kind of abuse is, breaking the trauma bond, working through cognitive dissonance, which is that brain fog of, you know, oh, this person loves me, but actually they, there's no way they can love me. That constant um, two battling thoughts that you're trying to figure out, nothing makes any sense. And just how do you heal from this horrific ongoing abuse? So August 18th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. If you can't make it, the webinar will be recorded. So again, find the link in my bio if you would like to attend the webinar. Um, and another thing coming up in October, I don't have all the information yet, but stay tuned. The Narc Avengers, which is a group of us who create content on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube, educating about narcissism and how you heal from it and everything I just mentioned. We're going to be having a meet and greet and kind of like an overall educational weekend in October in Austin, Texas. So stay tuned for that information. If you're in that area or want to fly out there and meet some of us, there'll probably be eight of us there, I think. So really good opportunity to meet some really awesome creators to get one-on-one -on -one, um, coaching sessions with us and just to get a lot of incredible information 
on healing for yourself, for others, etc. So again, if you like this episode, please subscribe. Um, if you're on the podcast, please rate and review. Again, you can find me on TikTok and Instagram, the Lindsay Goodman, or visit my website, the Thank you all so much for being here and I will see you all next week.